Greetings, friends from around the world. You're listening to the Bible News Prophecy Program, and my name is Alexander Sasha Velic. Uh, welcome. And uh, we have just entered the new 2023. And what we do know is that uh, the conflict in Ukraine sadly keeps going on. But there are some other developments there. And uh, there was a ceasefire for the Orthodox Christmas and the fact is also that Lugansk and Donetsk formally integrated into Russian armed forces. That's exactly what you need to be knowing as of the latest development. Uh, so the prob- the thing is that Russia declared the unilateral ceasefire for Orthodox Christmas, which ran uh, until January 7th, uh, 2023. Moscow was accusing Ukrainian front lines of unleashing fresh shelling on Russian forces hours into the ceasefire, and uh, Russia said that Ukraine was shelling Russian military positions during a 36-hour ceasefire, which Kiev and its allies have dismissed as a sham. Now, you may consider why was this ceasefire declared. Well, the uh, Russian President Vladimir Putin, considering that Christmas is considered the uh, one of the greatest holidays of Christianity, he uh, declared the ceasefire for the sake of religious observance or, or, or some kind of respect for that religious holiday. The Russian Defense Ministry said its positions had come under attack in the Lugansk, Donetsk and Zaporozhye regions, but that its troops were observing the ceasefire. Four mortar shells were fired at Russian positions by the armed forces of Ukraine in the direction of Liman, it was said in the, from the Russian sources. Ukraine's leadership had uh, already essentially said it uh, didn't want to respect the ceasefire, calling it a cynical ploy. Western countries had, on Thursday, dismissed it when it was first unveiled by Putin, starting with Germany and then US and and so on. Russian state media last Friday announced that at noon today the ceasefire regime came into force on the entire contact line. According to the national broadcaster Channel 1, it will continue until the end of January the 7th. Now, in other military matters in that region, please notice the following. On January 6, 2023, it was announced by the, uh, uh, by the uh, UK media that militias from Lugansk People's Republic and Donetsk People's Republic were formally integrated into the Russian armed forces on 31st December 2022. That was the British Defense Ministry who said it on Friday in his update on the Russian invasion of Ukraine, and he posted it on Twitter. Now, Luhansk and Donetsk are both internationally recognized as being part of Ukraine. However, Russia claims that Luhansk National Republic and Donetsk National Rep- People's Republic, that is, uh, are intrinsic parts of the Russian Federation following the fixed ex- accession referendums of September 2022, said the Russian ministry. In addition, Russia has discreetly controlled both since 2014, creating the DNR's 1st Army Corps and LNR 2nd Army Corps and supporting them with Russian military officers, which of course was provoked by the constant shelling by Zelensky's Ukraine, controlled Ukrainian forces that were constantly shelling the Lugansk and Donetsk, which are basically parts of Ukraine populated by ethnic Russians. Uh, those areas in the past used to be Russian territory, but uh, during the communist era of the USSR, the communists unilaterally, without any real reason, uh, separated those areas from Russia and the Russian homeland and gave them over to Ukraine. Anyway, the status and identities of the Donetsk and Lugansk likely remain divisive within the Russian system. Even before the February 2022 invasion, these territories represented a significant drain on Russian finances, the British Defense Ministry said. Now the Kremlin has overtly committed to supporting them. They they will likely constitute a large political, diplomatic and financial cost for Russia, which will last well beyond the current phase of the conflict. Meanwhile, the United States will send 50 Bradley fighting vehicles to Ukraine as a part of a new round of military aid to Kiev, Two defense officials told the Voice of America. Now, as I already mentioned, the Russian president ordered the Russian troops to stop attacks for a day and a half on the neighboring country starting at noon Friday. The Kremlin said the noon Friday was the uh, Friday night was the Christmas Eve, Christmas Orthodox Eve. And many Orthodox Christians, including those living in Russia and Ukraine, celebrate Christmas on January 6th and January 7th. 
Patriarch Kirill of Moscow, head of the Russian Orthodox Church and a supporter for Putin's invasion of Ukraine, called on Thursday for both sides of the war in Ukraine to observe a Christmas truce. But the Kiev government dismissed it as hypocrisy and a cynical trap, and uh, a writer also expressed skepticism. Now, from all the news we are having from the January 6th and 7th, I just need to caution you, our listeners, that you should not believe the incessant U.S. government and media propaganda about Ukraine, because Ukraine is not winning the war. In fact, Ukraine is losing badly. But wait, hasn't the news been talking up Ukrainian gains in recent months while Russia is retreating and being badly beaten? Well, that's the mainstream, pro-Ukrainian narrative. Here is the reality. Most of the Ukrainian gains were against lightly defended positions that the Russians quickly abandoned because they were not worth fighting to defend. That's the first reality. Then, those Russian troops, they're actually really Donbas militias, they were ordered to retreat to fortified Russian lines, while Ukrainian forces rushing to fill the void were slaughtered by Russian artillery bombardment. Most people think of war in terms of territory, but if you lose territory, it must mean that you're losing the war. But, friends, it's not always that simple. The Russians have got strategy. The Russian will, Russians will willingly cede territory in order to fight again at a later time under more favorable circumstances. They'll simply retake it when the terms favor them. They're not primarily concerned about the territory per se. The primary Russian objective is to grind down and destroy the Ukrainian armed forces and the Ukrainian regime, which they labeled as Nazi. And if the Ukrainians want to keep hurling themselves against Russian positions in order to recapture land and score a propaganda coup, that's fine with the Russians. They'll just grind the attacking forces down with heavy artillery fire, until it kills far more people in war than bullets or bombs. And despite the Ukrainian government claims, the best intelligence says Russia is presently enjoying an 8 to 10 uh, against 1 casualty rate. In other words, Russia is inflicting 8 to 10 casualties on Ukraine for every casualty it is suffering. That kind of ratio isn't sustainable for Ukraine. So that's the reality. And the other reality is Russia prepares to lower the boom on Ukraine, dear friends. And uh, I think you should hear that on this in this broadcast. Because meanwhile, Russia has reinforced its position within 300,000 or more fresh troops, about 30 divisions, who are rested and resupplied. That is in addition to the number of troops already in Ukraine, or rather to say in the areas populated by the ethnic Russians in Ukraine. Now, evidence indicates they are backed by at least 1,500 tanks, 5,000 armored fighting vehicles, 1,000 rocket artillery systems, hundreds of fixed-wing aircrafts and helicopters, plus thousands of tactical ballistic missiles, cruise missiles and drones. Putin believed that the special military operation would tell Kiev and Washington that Russia was serious about enforcing its red lines in Ukraine, that it was willing to use force. But he thought his show of force would bring them to the negotiating table. Well, sadly, he badly miscalculated because people are already tired of this war and they just want this to end as soon as possible. Rather than bring Kiev and Washington to the negotiating table, they resolved to aggressively defend Ukraine. Russia's ill-prepared forces were pushed back and routed in many instances. That said, the integration of the militaries of those in Donetsk and Lugansk is consistent with what we have already long expected and written about. For nearly a decade, many in the Donbas region have called for Russia to defend and annex them. Indeed, and here is something that you can find from rewriting of Bob Field, Russian forces storm Ukraine bases in Crimea and residents of Donetsk take to the streets calling for a vote to join Russia. Uh, That was written in March 22, 2014. And here is, I'm reading this excerpt from that. Russia is moving forward with its plans and Vladimir Putin is taking steps to make his... (laughs) hoped for Euro- Euro-Asian Union a reality. I'm certain, writes Bob Thiel, back in 2014, that he would as much of Ukraine as he can get. He would take as much as Ukraine he can get, 
he wants all of it and must be pleased that Donetsk wants to vote to join Russia. Vladimir Putin wants Ukraine to influence, dominate and ultimately control. He is repeatedly taking steps in order to increase Russian influence there. As far as how it will ultimately end, that is not impossible to predict. The Bible tells of the rise of the European beast power and the Euro-Asian power. Ukraine is geographically in the middle of that. Some or much of Ukraine will likely temporarily align with the European power. Even Russia appears prophesied to cooperate with it at some, for some time, uh, per Revelation 13 verse 4 and verse 8. The historian Herodotus claimed that there were six different tribes or families of Medes. They are mentioned also in the Bible, in the Bible in biblical prophecy. Herodotus identified the tribes of the Medes as Busi, Prataseni, or Paratakeni, Struhates, Arizanti, Budi, and the Magi. And you can find that in Herodotus a new and little version with a geographical and general index by Henry Carey. Uh, it's Histories, uh, Book 1, Chapter 101. Translated by Henry Carey, Harper, published by Harper, 1896. Original from the University of Virginia, digitized in January 23, 2009, page 46. Now, some of the Russians themselves appear to have been from the Medes. You can notice that uh, from the history, because today the people who constituted the empire of the Medes may be found in Western Russia, specifically the Ukraine and Volhynia. This was written by the uh, Craig White, the Great German Nation, Origins and Destiny, published by Author's House, 2007, page 285. But how are we to explain the name Russia? asked this author. Well, the old-fashioned view was to derive the word from the Hoxolani. This, however, has long been abandoned. One thing is certain, namely, that these Roxolani were of Oriental descent, a Medic or Iranic tribe. They disappear from history, having, like so many other tribes, as for instance the Pechenes and the Khozars, been swallowed up by the huge waves of immigration which overflowed the country. Uh, and uh, there are many disputes among academics as to who derived from whom, and thus it is completely clear, for example, that Roxolani were Medes who went to Russia. Now, the Bible has several end-time prophecies concerning the Medes, one in Isaiah 13, verse 17 through 19, several prophecies about the kings of the Medes in Jeremiah 51, 11, and uh, 51, verse 28 and 29, that involve military action and point to Russian involvement. You can find it in Jeremiah 50, verse 41, 42, 43, the book of Daniel, chapter 11, verse 44. Various ones in Crimea, Donetsk, Lugansk, Russia, and elsewhere are part of the descendants of the Medes, as likely are some in Moldova and perhaps elsewhere. If the Hoxolani were Medes, then it would seem to be consistent with certain biblical prophecy. While some or many in Ukraine descended from the Medes, so have some or many also who descended from the Medes in Russia. The Bible shows that those who are the kings of the Medes will turn against the final European Babylonian power. We have that in Jeremiah chapter 51 verse 11 and 12 and also in Jeremiah 51 verse 28 through 33. Historically, we believed that many in Ukraine descended from Madia, Madia, that is Medes. Various Russians are also descendants of Madia. The Barack, Barack Obama, the president of the USA, while encouraging sanctions, has repeatedly said that the USA will not intervene militarily. He said that in the past. However, Russia, the Europeans and the Ukrainians know, uh, know this and they, uh, they know that Russia was militarily too strong to really uh, engage with. Now, Russia is pleased with the results of the elections in eastern Ukraine. Russia is attempting to figure out how to best handle this. And in our view, while Russia does have some concerns about the Western sanctions, it really is trying to figure out how to get the public in eastern Ukraine and Moldova on its side. And uh, for more, you can find more information on our uh, internet site, uh, babadusprophecy.net. Until next time, goodbye, friends.